Episode 63, What's for Dinner? This is the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast, home of the Seven Days of Sex Challenge, featuring your hosts, the authors of the groundbreaking new book, Stripped Down, Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. Welcome back to One Extraordinary Marriage, where we talk about life, love, and the pursuit of intimacy. You're here with Elisa DiLorenzo. And Tony DiLorenzo. And uh, we've got a fun episode planned tonight, talking about what's for dinner, and how food impacts your marriage, and um, is so intimately a part of your marriage. But before we get to that, just a little bit about where we've been this week, and how, how things, things are, are going. going. Ooh. Yeah. We're on the same page. Yeah. Stop. I'm saying all these lines first. Okay. (laughs) First of all, I just want to say thank you um, to everyone for the prayers that you have been sending our way um, for health and healing, uh, specifically in regard to our fathers. And um, my dad sent me an email tonight uh, just letting me know a little bit about the robotic surgery that they're looking at doing with um, on the, they call it like a Da Vinci prostatectomy or something. I'm probably totally butchering that, but, um, the surgeon there in Columbus, Dr. Abaza is one of the top robotic surgeons in the country. And, um, just having done a little Google search on him, feel very confident that my dad is in very, very good hands. And, um, so keep those prayers coming. They're meeting with the surgeon on Wednesday to kind of discuss when the surgery is going to happen and, you know, probably get more details on what that all involves, but, um, things are moving in the right direction. My parents are optimistic and that as many of you know, is a great place to start when you're dealing with a diagnosis of cancer. So we are thankful, happy, thankful for that. Yeah, definitely happy. Yeah. And so we've, uh, we had date night Yeah, on Friday Friday night. night. So that was lots of fun. We went out um, to get dinner with some friends and ended up at Nickel City playing uh, the arcades there here in uh, Carl Mountain Ranch, San Diego. And, you know, just a fun night. Um, It was. You know, a little something different. We wouldn't normally go there, but it was kind of nice because I totally expected the place to be overrun with teenagers and it really wasn't bad at all. Um, So that was just much more enjoyable than date night three weeks ago when everything went wrong. This, yeah, this was date night where it's like, oh, okay, you know, an enjoyable meal. The fun thing about this date night too was, um, we, we, we I set it up with my buddy uh, Jason and his wife Denise, and we just I just said, hey man, we're doing date night. Why don't you join us? We're gonna go to Claim Jumper. Elisa had found a twenty five dollar gift card from Claim Jumper that she got for two bucks, so that's a score. And then we have our, our, our money and our budget for, for date nights and meals. But, uh, so we get there and we're talking and, and we're just, we're talking about where I am right now with eating, especially gearing up for the solving double century at the end of this month, at the end of March and how I'm just plowing through food. It's at this point now where, um, I've leaned out enough. Um, I've leaned out a little too much uh, I, I know that just from experience and having been riding for seven years and working out and fitness and all that jazz that I was a little off kilter. And so I finally, after getting better a couple of weeks back, I just said, you know what? It's time to just fatten up a little bit. And for me, that's not much. I mean, I can put on five pounds and I'll lose it uh, on one big day of riding. So anyways, we're talking and Jason's talking about how he just loves avocados because I ordered a chicken quesadilla off the gluten-free menu and it came with an avocado guacamole type side and I was like you know what throw another half of of avocado because I, I just needed that and so he was just talking about how when they lived in Oregon for 11 years they just didn't have good avocados so when he when they moved back down he said he was eating an avocado a day and ended up over the course of uh, something like over the course of a month, he'd gained about 15 pounds. Yeah. But it wasn't just avocado. It wasn't just that he was having avocado. No, he was, go- he was, he was going, going after the Mexican uh, food. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, getting his avocado as a side to <laughs> everything else. Everything else. So, you know, he put on a few pounds. Yeah. So that was, uh, 
that was fun though. And and while we were doing that, you know, he's showing out, he pulls out his driver's license and he's showing us a picture of him, which was just, it, it's hilarious because he's at least 15, 20 pounds less now. Probably. Yeah. Um, I mean, he doesn't weigh more than like a buck 20, buck 40, maybe. I, don't oh, know. I think he said 120, 125. Yeah. That's what I thought he said too. But then his wife, Denise pulls out her, her, um, driver's license and we noticed when she had walked up that she had lost weight too and she had made some changes to her eating habits and is doing fantastic but she get, hands us our her driver's license she's like oh look at you know and i'm looking at it going oh uh, yeah you, you look good denise what, what, what am i looking at she's like oh look at the look at the date and i'm the birthday and i'm like uh yeah okay great and elisa finally goes oh it's your birthday so it was it was really fun to be able to spend some birthday with them. Yeah, because they hadn't told us that it was just it was her a fun 40th. way to um, to find out about it and spend the time with them and yeah, and just kind of hang out for an evening because we don't get together with them very often. But the conversation is always great when we do. And um, yeah, we plowed through food that night. I mean, yeah. gosh, it was just good. And then we ended up ordering like their big fudge. They had brownie. Like a fudge brownie dessert and then the yeah. lemon bar. Yeah. We, we had to sing happy birthday to her and, and just do some fun stuff there. That was good. So, yeah, it was really good. And for me, I've had a good week. I uh, had the opportunity to uh, hang out with my buddy Pat Flynn from Smart Passive Income. On Friday, he and I get together once a month. And, and, and it's a lunchtime thing. So... Uh, the day before, I know Pat's going through P90X, and I and I hit him up on Twitter. I said, "Hey, dude, you still eating hamburgers? Because if if you are, I want to hit up In and Out Burger." <laughs> and he and he hits me back. He's like, "Dude, is it a cheat day for you?" And I was going, "You know what? Every day is a cheat day at this point. Again, because if I'm going to be doing a double century, and for those of you who don't know what a double century is, it's 200 miles riding in one day. Usually takes me. This course usually takes me about." 12 hours of ride time total time out is in the 13 and a half to 14 hour range because of the breaks and every, and, and things just inevitably over 200 miles, things happen and you have to slow down, wait for people. So it's a long day. And so I'm just like, dude, every day is a cheat day for me at this point. But when we met up on Friday, he he was like, well, do you want, if you want to go to in and out, let's go to in and out and, um, I'll just, I'll just get something else. And I was just like, no dude, it, it's totally cool. And then we started talking. I said, well, look at man, if you go protein with animal style, you know, protein style first off is, uh, and I went double, double. So double, double is, uh, protein style is no bun mm -hmm. wrapped in lettuce Animal style is grilled onions with mustard and ketchup. And it's just heavenly. Although in that, the, the only problem with that is, is that it's messy. It's really messy, especially animal style because all the juices don't get soaked up. But that, that so be it. in and out burger rocks. If you got to have fast food in and out is a place. And for all those of you who don't have one nearby, We're when sorry. you, when you come to Southern California, in or San Diego, by all means, please get a hold of us because we will take you there. We got one going in close to us, two miles away from us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love that. I place. can see my dining out budget's gonna have to go up a little oh, bit. <laughs> it's like, you know, when I die and go to heaven. Oh boy. It's like I hope God just has one of those up there, just like a really nice in and out. Have you been to a bad in and out? No. Okay. Because but in heaven, everything's going to be better. So, okay. I was going to say, because our quality control is so high that it is. I'd have a hard time envisioning a bad one. <laughs> and obviously, we're bringing this up because tonight we're going to talk about food. A lot about food. Yeah, we are. And I think we're going to, we're going to start back to the days when we first got married. Oh, I think we should go back to dating. To dating? Yeah. Okay. We can even go back there because it, for those of you who've seen us on Fit Marriage doing some cool videos of, like Elisa's done her oatmeal, uh, her apple cinnamon oatmeal. My uh, my power oatmeal is going to be coming out here shortly. It's going to hopefully compete against Elisa's. It's there, a there's little a little more. friendly family competition going on here because yeah. Tony Tony's a little bit amazed that my apple cinnamon oatmeal has over a thousand views on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And if you want to check it out, you can go to YouTube and then just hit Fit Marriage, 
and um, you can see it there. But it, it's kind of funny because yeah, I mean, it wasn't but, that long ago that I was at 500. Yeah, but I'm I'm in that video too, so I get half credit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little speechless here that he's claiming credit and he didn't do it. And that was a day that I looked horrendous, which I think is kind of funny too. I think that's awesome. Anyway, so he's putting up his power oatmeal. And yes, by all means, if you guys can help him get to a thousand views so that, you know, he can no, no, swell no, no. with pride. Not mine. No, no. We want you to get to a thousand. I'm no, already at over. a thousand. Yeah, you're over. I, I'm trying. Mine's, I'm not, try, even, mine's I'm trying, not up yet. I know, but I'm so. just trying to, you know, prime the pump for you, dude. Gotcha. Thank you very much. But um, yeah, back in the day. Back in the day. Back in the day. When Tony and I first met, um, we were both, I was carrying probably, where do I am now? Probably an extra 30 pounds, mm-hmm. give or take. And what were you? Another 30? 30. 30. Yeah. So we were, we were, you know, the size of a small child heavier Mm -hmm. than we are today. And, um, I thought, you know, we were in college, we were drinking, we were, you know, thought nothing. He'd be out working or come home late, you know, back to the fraternity house and, you know, of course the first words out of his mouth are like, let's do a Taco Bell run. Okay. Never mind the fact that it's midnight. Yeah. Never mind the fact that, wow, that's probably not the best thing to be choosing at any given point in time during the day. You know, let's go spend time together and we'll hang out at Taco Bell and it's cheap. We can get it out in two dollars. Right. right. I think that I think the big thing is is when it when you're that age sometimes it's almost you know, what's cost effective. Mm-hmm. You know? And obviously when you're a college student, it's cost effective. Taco Bell is cost effective. Yeah. And but, but I, I think we should talk more about our marriage and the foods we ate then. Well, but th- that kind of, that kind of what I, the reason I go back there is because that sort of set the stage that we were, you know, uh, even early well, on I, in our I, marriage. I, I don't know many, don't... I don't know many college students that eat well, personally. I, I did I, I'm hoping that we're changing that with our kids. Y- yeah, I understand. But I, I don't know many college students that eat really well, especially if they're living on their own. Yeah, well, Abby's going to be one of the first. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, hopefully fa- she is. Fast forward, 1996, we get married. And and the reason we're bringing this up is because meals and food play a huge part of our lives. And it, it just does. And, and many of us don't think about food having an impact in our intimacy. Mm-hmm. But think about your eating habits and what happens maybe at breakfast time while maybe you're getting your breakfast together, your spouse is getting their breakfast together, and then you have the kids and who's taking care of the kids and getting their meals together, or maybe it's dinner time and you have a choosy kid and one of you is going, no, this is what we're eating, and the other one is really just sort of caretaking and going, no, I'll make something else or you know will will accommodate this child and how does that play how does that play out and have an impact in your intimacy because it it may cause some friction you know it it it, it has in our family before oh sure i i mean you, you know a typical a typical friction causing moment when it comes to food and kids for us is when one will go to Elisa and go, Hey mom, can I have this cookie for instance? And Elisa will go, no, you cannot. You've already had, you've already had this, this and this today. We've already talked about it. And she may be outside. She may be in the living room and I'm here in the kitchen. And then said kid comes to dad and goes, Hey dad, can I have this cookie? And I'm thinking, you know what? It's four o'clock. We got a couple hours before dinner. You know what? Go for it. And then all of a sudden walks by said kid walks by Elisa with a cookie in his hand. And she goes, where did you get the cookie? Well, dad said I could. (laughs) And many of you may have been, may have been in this situation before. And you're like, wait a minute. I didn't tell you. Well, dad said, so now you're going to dad. And husband and wife got to talk about this. So food plays, although we don't think about it, plays a role in our intimacy. Well, on a lot of different levels. Because, uh, you know, if you do go back to the early stages of, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Married Life, you know, 
I, I had no food repertoire. We ate bean burritos. And, and, and when I say bean burritos, it was straight out of the can. Beans on a tortilla with some cheese. That was it. Like Th- that no was sides. It. Yeah, th- there was Just no a like bean burritos. sides or anything of that nature. We would have a frozen pizza, which was sort of a gross type frozen pizza. It wasn't like good stuff, was it? I, I, don't, I don't even remember. I've, it's not like the frozen pizzas we get now. I can eat the frozen pizzas. We yeah, eat. yeah. I, it's been such a long time since I've even bought frozen pizza I know, now. That, but the ones I'm talking about, yeah. you know, like the ones from Trader Joe's. We had fish sticks. Okay, stop laughing. All of you that are sitting here <laughs> listening to this right now, just stop laughing for again, a minute because again. I'm sure I'm not alone in my, in my cooking um, repertoire. Repertoire. Some of you are saying, oh my gosh, that sounds like our years. Yeah. Okay, just work with us here. Yeah. It's going to get better. And again, no sides. I mean, it was just fish sticks and some dip and pasta. And I'm Italian and I and my mom is Italian <laughs> who, when I grew up, always made sauce, homemade sauce on Sundays. We would have sauce 12 o'clock on Sundays. That was my dad's deal. We had sauce on Sundays, like real Italian sauce. So I went from that to ragu type style. Prego. Prego, whatever, same thing. <laughs> Not quite. Okay. I have to think prego is better than ragu. O- okay. So for this Italian... Kid, I, I still remember the first time your mom saw a jar. Of- but here's the thing that, in, that, that that's sort of interesting. Oh. And I got to bring this up because Elisa brings it up when we talk about college. So in college, it wasn't any big deal if I had sauce like that you know if the guys because I lived in a house uh one year with four other guys and you know we'd do pasta night it was no big deal but it's interesting having gotten married the expectations I had of my wife to make mama sauce mama sauce not just sauce but mama sauce the the sauce the good stuff and it wasn't good you ate it I, sure. If I didn't, I was going to starve. <laughs> <laughs> Meals were not enjoyable. No. And the other thing was we ate out a lot. Which obviously put a, a damper a, a, on the budget. Which which puts a, a huge damper on the budget, especially when you're not following a budget and you're just going more and more into debt. Mm-hmm. So we're we're going to just sort of talk to you a little bit about sort of the, how food plays into our intimacy and where we are today. Because mm-hmm. so. we've come a long way. Um, we did spend the early years of our marriage kind of on that treadmill of not eating so great at home, um, eating out a few times a week. Easily. Consistently. I mean, I would say probably two to three. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see if I had three things, probably, yeah, probably three to four. Um, I know when we lived down in the, Palm Desert area, you know, with my coworkers and stuff, we'd go out at least twice a week with them, and then and those were usually like bar food yeah. and beer. Yeah, you know, so of course there's all kinds of calories associated with that food, um, and we weren't real conscious about what we were eating. You know, breakfast was maybe a bowl of cereal, some toast, an egg. I mean, nothing. There just wasn't a consciousness, and I think, about what we were eating. And I think one of those things, one thing that sort of dampened, not dampened life, but just was sort of drudgery at times in life was that we weren't fueling our bodies correctly. Mm -hmm. So we weren't really able to, um, gosh, be as passionate as we wanted to be at times because we were, we were low on energy. Mm -hmm. We were lethargic. Um, we were eating a lot of junk too. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. It, It played a big role on how we would, we would interact with each other. Right. And, so fast forward to 2002. Okay. We've been married six years. Mm-hmm. Nothing's really changed in that period of time. Right. I mean, I, I really can't think, oh yeah, you know. Lunches, we didn't make lunches. We wouldn't take lunches to no, work. No, because you would just eat out with the guys and I would go out with my coworkers. And, mm-hmm. you know, so there's, you know, dollars every day, literally just going out the door for restaurants. Yeah. Every day. And, and you know what, guys it, and gals, if if you are eating out a lot and you got a budget issue and you guys are working on that or you haven't talked about that and you need to, 
I'll tell you, it's one of the big areas where money just seeps out of your pocket and causes friction in your marriage. Mm -hmm. It it really is. And um, you got to talk about it because if, if spouse husband is, you know, going out to lunch every day and you guys are trying to work the budget and he's blowing it there, you got to talk, you got to talk through and find out a way so that there's maybe leftovers from the night before. Uh, personally, myself, I, I take my lunch with me, and I can change it up. I do certain things, um, so that way I'm not blowing our budget. Right, because you that's. Know. I mean, think about it. You know, you're going out for a burger and fries. That's five bucks. You do that. <laughs> well, depending on where you're going, <laughs> five to seven. Yeah, I mean, Pat, Pat and I went to. I mean, Pat and I went to In and Out, and it's like. 16, 17 bucks for two guys. Okay, so that's eight bucks. You know? Um, okay, let's round up and say 10. Okay. But you do that five times a week, that's 50 bucks. Yeah. I would say that's a tank of gas, but anymore, that's, you know, almost a tank of gas. Um, <laughs> you know, but if you couple that with, you know, so if you're both doing that, that's $100 a week. Mm-hmm. If you're also going out to dinner a couple of nights, I mean, you could easily be looking at $200 a week just on eating out. 800 a month uh, on restaurants. Yeah. You know, that's, if you, our, if that's got, our budget for all our food for the whole month. Exactly. You know, and that, that takes care of everything for a family of four. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. We're not that's, talking about two people. Everything. Um, so 2002, we moved up to Washington. No, 2001, we moved up to Washington, 2002. Um, beginning of that year, things just started changing for me. We had a really good kitchen in our apartment in Washington. And I started getting more interested in food. There were a lot of farmer's markets around us. Mm -hmm. And And if you have a farmer's market in your area, go walk around it. Go check out what's there. I mean, you may not like everything that's there, but maybe something or other will pop at you. and Talk to the farmers too because they're very knowledgeable and they want to share about their fruits and vegetables. And they're fun to talk to and to get to know. And, and so, you know, I started frequenting these farmer's markets and I started, I started very slowly mm-hmm. with cookbooks. Absolutely a huge fan of cookbooks. You know, if you guys have got any favorites that you love, shoot them my way at askalisa at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. Love, love, love to learn about new cookbooks. Um, but I started out really small with cookbooks that were, you know, three to five ingredients. Mm-hmm. And, you know, would just say, okay, you know what? I'm just going to, I'm just going to try something like all of these things together sound good or individually sound good. I bet it'll taste good together. And it was a process. Totally. It was definitely baby steps. We threw food away. We did. We threw a couple, we've thrown meals away. You know what? The reality is, is that sometimes things don't go together as well as you think, you know, the ingredients may all sound good individually, but sometimes they don't go together. Actually, even just even a couple of weeks ago, we had sort of a crummy mahi mahi. Kids loved it. The kids loved it. It was, it was chewy as all get out. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh, cause we, br- we didn't grill it. No. For us, we prefer our mahi mahi grills, but, um, yeah, but uh, that's where it started. That's the way to do it. And you know, it, it's been a process. So that, you know, Alex is eight. I was eight and a half years ago that this started and what started happening is we started enjoying food together at home Mm -hmm. and as you know that coincided with that year that year and a half that we were up in washington and so we were also very budget conscious because that's when we were really that's really working our dave ramsey we were working our dave ramsey we were you know we were expecting a baby we were trying to make sure all our debt was taken care of before the baby came and so the combination of being extremely budget conscious and you know exploring food using it as a creative outlet to say you know what i bet i can do things and knowing that it wasn't always going to turn out great and you know for those of you that haven't really experimented in the kitchen it will not always turn out well yeah that's why you have the frozen pizza in the freezer so that, you know what, on those nights you can be like, you know what, kids, I need 15 minutes. We're having pizza. Yeah. You suddenly become the hero. Um, yeah, we've had like. We've had nights like that. We've had totally. nights where, you know. We've had nights where we've had to just go out. <laughs> we have. But you know what? That's that's what it's all about. It, it It's about having fun too. 
you know, in learning through the process. I know it's hard and we can laugh now, but I'll tell you in the moment, it wasn't so much laughing going on. And, and, you know, because if you're, if your stomach's grumbling and you're hungry and all of a sudden it doesn't work out now, it's like, Oh my goodness, what are we going to do? And I mean, sometimes you're sometimes just, sometimes it's cereal. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes you're just throwing together some eggs, you know, you're doing uh, breakfast for dinner and, and making it happen. Um, I think it's something that you need to talk about mm-hmm. in your marriage with your spouse. It, it, it's interesting because I hear about it that that people just don't talk about it. It's like there's this expectation that the wife has to cook all the time. It, that is her expectation. That is her job. And and guys, it it, it isn't. You know. Maybe you have a stay-at-home wife. Kudos to you. And maybe that's something that is on her her list, but it doesn't give you the right to not be a part of it at all. Mm-hmm. You know, talk to her about it. Help her out. Maybe if you come home and she's cooking, help her out somewhere. One of the things I try to do for Elisa and her family is do the dishwasher. Mm-hmm. Elisa does not like doing dishes and... I know that, and so it is just my way of just making it go away most of the time. I, I cook um, the meal, he does the dishes. Yeah, but even breakfast time, it's, you know, I'll make my meal. If if the kids need a smoothie, because I'm having a smoothie, I, I mean, I'll make it up right there. Um, we've already taught Abby how to make eggs. She's five. She can make her own eggs. Alex is a little slower, but we, we're, we're getting them going. <laughs> well, but, but that's, I mean, that's been another shift for us um you know let me go back to the dinners thing and then we'll come back to breakfast and stuff like that but so when i was pregnant with alex your mom um your your parents came out before he was born Mm -hmm. and that was when i asked your mom for the sauce recipe Mm -hmm. and so it's been eight years of me making sauce and um we got to go back to that recipe though the last one was a little I just didn't add sugar the last time. All right. Well, let's add that back. A little in bit there. of sugar. Okay. Yeah. I'll put your sugar. No, back let's, in. let's add that sugar back in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, I thought it tasted fine. I, I know you did. I, my sweet tooth is, is diminishing, but, um, mine isn't. So yeah, it, it got to, it got to the point where Tony actually told his mom, and this is something an Italian son should never tell his Italian mother, but he did tell his mom that my sauce was better than hers. Um, pat on the back for me but well mom's sauce has been tasting a little i don't know where it's going last the last time your dad's making it now oh maybe oh is dad making it? i don't know i'm just asking i don't know i didn't know dad was making it Um, but you know what's happened is it's been a creative journey and it's been one that you know I, i i've gotten to the point where i take a lot of liberties in the kitchen i'm like yeah i think that's gonna sell you know Sounds good. Like we could add that. Like I was making cookies the other day and I didn't have exactly what I needed. And so I substituted, I was making the chocolate chip cookies and it calls for three cups of almond flour and I only had two, but I had flaxseed meal. And so I just added that in. And you know what? The kids actually liked them better than the batch that I made when it was all almond flour. Yeah. No, oh, those cookies are, I'm going to have one after this podcast. Yeah. I already had my, um, I've already had two today. They're really good. They are. Yeah. Anyway. But it, I don't know if you guys are catching us talking the way we were talking about food. It, it's there's there's something in about food that is so ingrained in how we act with each other. You know what? When you listen to us about date night, what do we do? It's 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 around usually dinner. Whether it's at home at or at home a restaurant. Or at a restaurant. It's around dinner so it can cause a lot of enjoyment in our lives or it can cause friction Mm -hmm. and the good side of that is the enjoyment part we've all had that scrumptious meal where we're just we're just full and we're beaming and, and the love is just oozing from us and leads to a very intimate night sure sexually i'm feeling all the love oozing And then there are times, though, where the whole food issue causes a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know which camp you're in because there have been periods in our marriage where it is that food is just, it's fun. We've made it 
a joy to be around. We're talking about it. We talk about our grocery list. What do we need? How do we, you know, stock the the house? Right. And mm-hmm. there are times when it's just, it, it's just you do it, I do it, and it really does cause tension. Mm-hmm. And and I'm sorry to say, but it, it causes tension when it comes to our sexual intimacy. Think about it. You know, think about that. If you're fighting over the meal, you're probably having the same fight carried over into your bedroom right because, because there's, it's there's that issues. Divi- it's that division mm-hmm. you know if it's if it's all him or all her or you know you don't like what's being made every night um because it doesn't you know it's not the way mama made it or it's not what you like to eat but you're not saying anything those issues are going to carry over into your bedroom it, it, it sounds on the surface it sounds really silly for us to say that but if you take a minute and think about it When we have a lot of tension in the bedroom, there's probably tension in our kitchen and vice versa because they're so intimately involved. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not happy at the dinner table, it's going to be hard to be happy a few hours later in the bedroom. Right. You're right. You know, it it just is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if you and your spouse are not on the same page as far as what you like to eat, maybe you prefer more of, I'm going to say a junk food diet, um, you know, more of your processed foods and things like that. And she wants to cook healthier or vice versa, Mm -hmm. you know, then you guys need to come to some kind of compromise. Well, you got to talk about it first. That that, that would help. You've got to share that. It can't just be this building resentment or if you're on a budget in in the, can I, can I, the other thing is to guys again, if, it, if there's something you want to eat and, and you love it, then step up to the plate and make it. And I'm not talking just grilling. I mean, I love grilling too. But there are just times when, you know what, there's something I want to make and I'll make it. Mm-hmm. Usually for me, it's in that breakfast hour, lunches, cool, you know, I'll, I'll take the, the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Initiative. Initiative Maybe. there. For dinners, Elisa and I usually will talk over that at the beginning of the week and we'll lay it out. A lot of reasons why we do this, f- physical activity has a big, big play in it, mm-hmm. um, especially when I start ramping up for like a double century. Right. I, ju- I just did 100 miles today. Uh, I got a 125 to 130 miles next Sunday and then I got my double century at the other month. It's very imperative and important to me that I'm fueling my body. So I need to... Let Elisa know, okay, this is what's going on. This is what I need. Right. Um, and, and so we talk about that. She just ends up usually doing that. On the other end, though, I'm usually taking care of dishes, mm-hmm. you know, taking care of the dishwasher, being a part of what's happening in the kitchen. Right. And you know what I want to say? Because I was actually having a conversation with a girlfriend um, this weekend, and I've got another girlfriend who does this as well you know, they both tend to cook on the healthier side of things. You know, they're, they're budget conscious. And so their food dollars are going to more nutritious foods that are, you know, best bang for your buck, that Mm -hmm. whole type of thing. Um, but they both have husbands who love to have, you know, kind of the comfort slash junk food meals. Mm -hmm. And so what they've decided to do is they pick one day a week that that's, what's going to be on the menu. So it's not like we're going to eat junky all week. You know, I'm, they're going to use their budgetary dollars to give, you know, six days of good meals. And then on the seventh day, they're going to have the fun, you know, processed, whatever. Right. Yeah. That's one way to compromise. You know, another way is to say, okay, you know what, if you, you know, sit down and meal plan together. Yeah. What do you know? A time to sit down and talk. There you go. What do you know? That you can actually have an intimate moment emotionally, intellectually, have conversation over meal planning. You can because there are times when, you know, and that's when Tony and I do that. It's also, okay, what's going on this week? You know, you could say, hey, honey, why don't you get that chocolate syrup? Get a little bottle. Hey, honey, maybe pick up the, uh, the whipped cream. Those are food items that should be in your household 
and need to thought that they need to be thought out and bought. So the moment doesn't come and you miss out on it. <laughs> and if you like little cherry, buy those little bridge. Maraschino cherries. There you go. Are you feeling like a Sunday dude? <laughs> I, I'm just saying these are food items that have been used in our bedroom. Except for the cherry. I don't like cherries. Neither do I. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what other food items have been used. I think that's it in the bedroom. Honey? No. Too sticky. Yeah, too sticky. Unless you we wanna, digress. Unless, unless you want to stick together. Uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> food of choice in the bedroom. But going back to intimacy in your marriage with food. Work with me here. Come back to the conversation. I, I'm, I'm okay. here. I'm just saying. Food can be used in in a That's way, true. and and to make those suggestions over the grocery list, right? You know, to say, hey, what about this? Or you know, maybe you're looking at your week and you're saying, you know what, we could probably get the kids to bed at a decent hour on you know Thursday night. Let's you and me have dinner after. Yeah, we've done that little date. The kids in. go to bed, you know, because sometimes it and you just have like a little appetizer when the kids are eating, so you're still eating as a family. And mm-hmm. this is something we're very. You know, when you talk about intimacy and in, with food and with your family, having dinner together as a family, big. This is big for opinion. us. Um, we eat dinner together as a family almost every night during the week. If it doesn't happen, it, it, it probably once or twice a week doesn't happen. But if we're all here, we all eat together. Yeah, that that's 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 big for us. We really believe in that. The kids um, may not always be thrilled about it because they're just not always thrilled with what I put on the table. But whatever. that's another thing that we have established as a rule in our family. Mm-hmm. What mom makes for dinner is for dinner. Um, unless dad tries it and says it's no good. <laughs> in which case, he's the only one that gets to veto uh, that rule. And that's because the kids may just be going through a mood where, you know, last week they liked zucchini and this week they don't. Well, right. guess what? Zucchini is still on your plate. And it, this is a, a time to talk about that with your spouse. Mm-hmm. Because if you guys are going head to head over this, do you, do you think it's going to be harder to have these intimate, these sexu- these intimate sexual moments with each other? Sure it is. Because you guys are going back and forth. And, and it causes the tension. The again, we're bringing something up that I don't think anybody of I've ever heard of talk about how our food in our marriage can really affect what happens in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And maybe you guys have, and if so, send it my way. I'd love to read what they got or hear what they have to say. We have just noticed this over time. Right. And there's an effect even for myself when I get too leaned out so when I'm working out and I'm hitting it hard in the off season, there are times when I get so leaned out, I have very little body fat and I start feeling like crap. He gets mean too. Not mean, but cranky, irritable. Cranky, irritable. Yeah, because I have very low fat levels. My brain needs the fat. It's not functioning properly. I've done it before mm-hmm. and, and, I, and I know what starts happening. Yeah, I do get cranky. I get irritable and it causes tension for Elisa and I. And honestly, since I started plowing down some food for this last week and a half, I'm feeling great. Mm-hmm. I really am. It's like, oh my gosh, the light bulb. Now, for those of you who are going, well, geez, Tony, that's great. I'm overweight. Well, you got to look at how you can start decreasing and shedding the fat. Well, and because that's what, you know, I've been doing this um, transformation challenge mm-hmm. with Holly Rigsby there on club uh, or fityummymummy.com. And you know, not that I was overweight, but I wanted to get in better shape. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I don't know where you are on the weight spectrum. You know, I've seen women go through amazing mm-hmm. results as a part of being part of this transformation challenge. But, you know, I'm starting to use food and my nutrition as a means to tone up my body in addition to the exercise, but just really being conscious of what I put in my mouth so that I feel more attractive Mm -hmm. and and therefore am more attractive to you. Right. Because I feel more attractive. It's not that you necessarily are viewing me differently. It's because I'm viewing myself differently because of what the changes that I know are happening. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and so that's another way that you can use food to build the intimacy in your marriage. Yeah, or if the two of you, like Elisa and I, years ago, overweight, not feeling healthy, we we took it upon ourselves and helped each other. Mm-hmm. Similar to like getting out of debt. If any of you have been using Dave Ramsey, you do it together. Right. You know, work at it together. Support each other. Maybe one of you is a little leaner than the other. You know, whatever it may be, come around together and help each other out. Mm-hmm. Because I I really do believe that if this area of your life can be settled a bit more, we we won't have folks overeating because it's not tied to emotions anymore. You're using your food as an energy source, which is what it is, so that you can have great sex. Because your energy level is up, you're feeling good, you're feeling sexy, your, your spouse sees it, you see it in them. And lo and behold, the house is calmer. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more fun happening around these occasions. And it's not just an emotional, you know, filling. Right. Because there's some, there's more good stuff going on. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people look to food to, you know, kind of make them feel better. And, you know, things aren't well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, a lot of people stress eat and, and things like that. And so if you can if you can create harmony around the food, then that you know, it's kind of this chicken and egg thing. Yeah. A cycle. But you know, what we've found over the last few years is that it's we've both kind of gotten on the same page as far as nutrition, um and have become more active together in the kitchen it's really had an impact on our marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fun to get a new cookbook um, and say, Oh, you know, this sounds good. What do you think about this? And you know, he might say, "Mm, not so much. Or, you know, if I'm meal planning for the week and it's like, you know, that meal's not going to work for me on that day because of the workout. Okay. You know, it's, it's nothing personal because I know why he's saying no. Yeah. Or we go out to eat and because I eat gluten free now, he tries to find something off the gluten free menu that's going to appeal to him so that if I want to have a nibble, you know, I'm not worried about having a reaction. Right. You know, so you know, that's a gift that he is giving me over food by making that choice, by making the choice to clean up the kitchen, you know, that division of labor. I don't have to think about, Oh, I'm going to put together this big meal and then I've got to, you know, we put the kids to get bed together and then I've got to come back out to the kitchen and look at that pile of dishes, even though I spent all that time cooking the meal. He just does it. Right. It's just a division of labor. It doesn't have to be all him or all her. You know, these are ways that you can come together in your marriage around the kitchen, around food and build stronger bonds. Mm-hmm. You have to eat. Uh, you, 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 that that's a given. <laughs> so given that you have to eat, it should be an enjoyable experience. It should be something that strengthens your marriage. Yeah. Don't let it be torn apart because you know, you want to make chicken every night and he hates chicken and nobody's talking about it. So he just grumbles every time he sits down at the table and says, Oh great chicken again. And you're like, but it was on sale and I'm trying to live within our budget. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't know that. He just knows you're putting chicken on the table again and you don't know why he's cranky because he won't tell you he hates chicken five nights in a row. Talk about it. Which I understand because we've, we've been there too. We've done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Make, make it make it happen. Make make the conversations happen. And our buddy Dustin Reekman over at Engage Marriage is releasing his book, his first book called uh, 15 Minute Marriage Makeover. And I suggest any of you who are looking to sort of dig deeper talking, learning how to get through some of the communication issues that you might be having right now. And even discussing what we've been talking about today, you know, the food issue, you may want to jump on over and check out his book. I mean, it's a really cool setup. 15 minutes a day over 28 days, you know, makes it happen, makes that makes a habit. And maybe throughout this time, you could really start digging into your food, man. Grab it. Learn from what he has to teach you. But on the side, start pulling out that grocery list and talk about it together. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a link here in the post 
so that you can grab it. That is an affiliate link. So we would really appreciate if you buy it through us on that. Yeah. And you know, it's not just the two of you. If you have children, um, you know, the more mouths you have to feed, the more, (laughs) the more variables there are in the equation. Um, but if the two of you can come together on how you're going to handle food and what kind of, um, foundation you're going to lay for your children. Mm -hmm. If the two of you are on the same page, they can't really tear you apart. Yeah. And, And they'll try their kids. They do a good job, you know, but you know, establish the rules for what food's going to be like in your family. You know, is mom going to be a shorter to cook and, you know, whoever likes whatever dinner gets it or is dinner family time? You yeah. know, I've told my kids, when you start cooking dinner, we will eat whatever you make until then. It's me. You know, it, it's all about how you build that, how you build up your children to be cooks in the kitchen. You know, I've got a five-year-old that is writing her own recipes and they're good. I'm a little surprised she's already, (laughs) well, because you know, a five-year-old could go either way, but she is already very creative in the kitchen and we give her a lot of free reign to tell us what ingredients she wants to use. And, you know, we all do a sample bite and, you know, so far so good. Yeah. So this week we would, we would suggest that you guys do make this week a time where you guys start sitting down and looking at this. You know, make, make some time, think about this, but really take the time to sit down together Mm -hmm. and talk about it and how it, how it's been played out in your family, in your marriage so far and what you want to change. So you can have the extraordinary marriage in this area of your life. It's something different than a lot of people are thinking and talking about, but we really believe that. It has had a it has had a, a profound effect on our marriage and how we engage each other mm-hmm. when it comes to our sexual intimacy. Absolutely. So it has been another fantastic evening with you guys. We hope you have a fantastic week, and we love you guys. Thanks for listening to the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast. We would love to hear from you. You can go ahead and give us a call at area code 858-876-5663 or send us an email to info at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. The website is oneextraordinarymarriage.com. And while you're there, you can sign up for our Marriage Minute Monday newsletter and you can also purchase Tony and Elisa's new book, Stripped Down. It's available now in print, audio, and ebook formats. Also, the One Extraordinary Marriage Podcast has sponsorship opportunities available now. If your business is interested in sponsoring this podcast, please contact us at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. Thank you.